Hello, thanks for joining me. In this video I'll be showing you how we can create a what's called a curve of pursuit which is a similar diagram or a diagram like this one. If you imagine a mouse sitting on each corner of a square and they're travelling clockwise initially but uh, say this mouse here heads for this one but as this one changes direction the first mouse has to readjust his path direction and they keep doing so and adjusting their directions and these tangents to the path create a form of uh, this pattern. Anyway, let's move across and create one or move up. I need that for something else. Okay, let's start with a square. Square tool, control shift to drag out a square. And we bring up the transform menu. You might have to press uh, control shift M for that. And with that selected, I'm going to click the scale tab and we'll start with a 90% dilation. Click scale proportionally and apply to each object separately is OK. And under rotate we're going to rotate this as well 6.8 degrees. How I came up with that value uh, I'll show you in a minute. But, um, let's go back to scale for the moment and duplicate first. Control D, place copy on top, apply the transformation to the duplicate. Apply and there's a 90% smaller square. We go to rotate and then apply that as well to that square. You can see it just fits in nicely. And I calculated that uh, using cosine rule and a whole lot of uh, other maths and found that it was 6.8 degrees required. But if you don't want to do that and you're messing around, you can just adjust this angle until you get it hitting the square. For example, if I, if I tried um, 8 degrees and applied that, you'd see that uh, down this corner it's just a bit too much, it's gone too far outside so you can do a trial and error and adjust um, that rotation anyway I'll control Z to go back to that and as I said we'll apply 6.8 degree rotation, got to select it first then apply, there we have it. Now with that still selected let's control D to duplicate that one and apply the rotation first and the scale second so the routine is Control D, apply, and swap the transformation, apply. Control D, apply, swap, apply. Control D, apply, swap, apply, and so on. And you start to build up these curves. You can see um, there's the result of many of them. Now I've got, uh, you can do that on any shape, but. Um, Let's have a look at the uh, pentagon. If I can drag across here, I think I had one prepared earlier. Yep. Let's look at that pentagon. Now I've calculated, we'll keep the scale at 90%, but I've calculated for a pentagon it's uh, 10 degrees to one decimal place. And that uh, that is correct mathematically. So let's go back to scale. Control D, apply that 90% transformation, then under rotation, apply that. And you might say, well, if you calculated it, how come it's sticking out there or not quite right there? And that's to do with where Inkscape places the centre of a, a pentagon, an odd sided, uh, odd number of sides polygon. Really, what I think I'd need to do is drop perpendiculars from a corner to perpendicular to the opposite side, do that in a couple of spots, find the centre each time, and that's a different centre than the one that Inkscape uses for rotation. But that would be quite laborious. So what I prefer to do is click on the shape and just use the arrow keys. You can see if I look at this corner here I've got to come down a bit and this one is telling me I've got to go a bit to the left. So maybe you know, down and left alternately with the arrow keys is what I'm doing until I get there. Since I'm going quickly I'll just click again just to do all the down ones together holding the down key. Now across to the left, and look, that looks pretty good. Uh, don't uh, get too wound up in this because there are many curves and they all combine anyway. So once you've got it uh, just nudged there, then Control D, apply, swap the transformation, apply that, and that actually doesn't look too bad. See, it's sticky, sticking out a bit there, a bit too high. This one's yeah, a bit too high as well. So let's click it and arrow key down to about there 
it looks like it's sticking out just a bit there so maybe just I mean I'm being a bit fussy maybe a little bit to the to the right until you're happy enough then we keep going so there's an extra fiddly step here control D apply we'll do one more rotate and apply and yeah let's drag that down a bit a bit to the right maybe and so forth you'll find as they get smaller you end up not having to do this nudging with the arrows um, but I'll stop there and that's how you build up the pentagon but even number of sides you don't have to do that arrow step if I scroll down you can see here are the uh, angles required for the first three regular polygons at 90 degree dilations but we can only get up to a hexagon if we try to go any further than that we can't do it and I'll show you why for example with an octagon I think I had that up up here ready to go yeah so let's go to an octagon and under the scale tab let's control D and apply if I click that a second time you can see if I rotate this now it's never going to touch that's the closest I get in the middle and then it's going away again so there are some shapes depending on the dilation that you just can't get touching the sides of the original and that's why it's as far as I can get for 90 degree for 95 percent dilations you can actually get up to a nonagon and there are the angles that you need to be able to do that so this could be a handy chart for creating those patterns but uh, you can see there are some fascinating patterns that you can produce you know, with uh, this uh, method and I uh, hope that uh, you found that uh, useful and as, as always thanks for watching